Hello again, everybody. Now we're in Module 3. We're still in Chapter 2. We're going to be dealing with the concept of freefall. Still going to be using the same equations, the kinematic equations. They're on your equation sheet. There is a separate section where all of the x's have been replaced with y's, because now we're going to be talking about motion in the vertical direction, the up and down motion. So let's consider a bowling ball and a feather dropped from the same height. Think about how they're going to fall. Do heavier objects always fall faster? Not necessarily. We live in a world with air resistance, and so sometimes we see objects that are heavier falling faster than objects that are lighter. But that's not always the case. Let's take a look at this. So that bowling ball and feather there, actually a, a few feathers, um, they fell at the same rate. And the reason is that they're in a vacuum chamber. So there's no air present, so no, no air resistance. So the bowling ball weighs many, many, <coughs> excuse me, many, many times more than the feathers do. But they fall at the same rate. They have the same ratio of force to mass. Okay, and that'll make more sense when we get to chapter four and we see Okay, F equals MA, which means A equals F over M. So if the ratio of the force of gravity to the mass is the same, then all of the objects fall at the same rate. And that's, that's a pretty startling thing to realize, that when air resistance is insignificant, which is what the definition of free fall is, gravity is the only significant force acting, then everything falls at the same rate. Now, what about for a ball thrown straight upward? Well, once the ball leaves the person's hand, that ball is in free fall. Okay, the ball's going upward, but it's in free fall. Okay, and that might not be how you're used to using that word. Okay, so when the ball's going upward, it has an upward velocity. But what's happening to it? It's slowing down. And we know from module two, well, one and two, that if the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions, then the object is slowing down. And so that's what's happening when the ball is on the way up. Okay, so it's in free fall. We're talking about right after it's left your hand all the way up until it gets to the peak. Acceleration's downward, velocity's upward. The velocity will be getting smaller and smaller. The acceleration will stay the same the whole time. As the ball comes back downward, the acceleration is still downward, but now the velocity's downward as well. The size of that vector will be changing, it'll be increasing with time, but the acceleration is staying the same. So now velocity and acceleration are both downward and the object is speeding up. Okay, and when the ball was at the peak, acceleration was still downward, but velocity was zero, just for that instant. A millionth of a second before it reached the peak, it had an, a small upward velocity, and a millionth of a second after the peak, it has a small downward velocity. And so you can see the velocity is changing even in just millionths of a second and so it does have an acceleration at the peak and it's still the same okay and the acceleration for objects that are in free fall near the surface of the earth is 9.8 meters per second squared the acceleration due to gravity other places okay if you're not close to the surface of the earth if you're say a hundred miles up okay if you're just like five miles up yeah that's a pretty good distance from the surface of the earth but the acceleration due to gravity five miles up is still 9.8 meters per second squared but if you get significantly far up and i'm just going to throw out 100 miles then you see a noticeable noticeably different uh, acceleration due to gravity also on the moon different acceleration due to gravity each each planet has its own acceleration due to gravity depending on the size and the mass of the planet all right so now that we know that the acceleration for an object in free fall is 9.8 meters per second squared downward, which if you pick up as positive, then it's going to be negative 9.8. And that means in these equations over here, we change all the x's into y's. And now it's the exact same equations, but they apply to the vertical direction. Now, this might seem like it's more difficult than what we were doing in module two, but I actually think it's easier. Sure, it's a little strange to get used to something that's going upward 
being in free fall. But the good thing about all these free fall problems is you know the acceleration, a sub y, you know that for every single problem. Okay, any free fall problem, a sub y, 9.8 meters per second squared downward. If you pick up as positive, that means that a sub y is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared each time there's a free fall problem. All right, I think you're ready to tackle module three. Good luck. I'm here if you have any questions.